Yes. Amen. They're going to get past in trouble. Yes, Lord. We again just pray you for it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, I got to get some 
Yes. Watch over them because you want to, not because you are forced. That is how God wants it. Do it because you are happy to serve, not because you want money. You have to do this. Do not be like a ruler over people. You are responsible for it. But be good examples to them. Amen. Be good examples. Then when Christ, the chief shepherd, comes, you will get a glorious crown that will never lose its beauty. And our message is guiding the flock to part. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you would encourage someone today to serve you more fully, to be a shepherd who loves, to be a leader who cares. And each of us, if we can learn to lead by example, someone in our family, a uh, friend, co-worker, bless us to be that type of person who is caring. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Um, before I, I begin today, uh, we want to, to say this. Those of you, y'all don't need to see me, but if y'all want, y'all might move to the other side of the side of the chair. I know Vincent is all, all up there, you know, all the camera. I apologize, I was unable to. I forgot my other camera, so he back on my cell Is he doing a good job? He got, he got me on blast. If I'm looking good, it's in my... Yes, sir, you, you yeah. straight. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, we, we are so, so delighted to be with you today. But um, there, there were two, two of the verses of Scripture that grabbed me today. It's not a part of my message. But where it said that if you do well, if you do well, you will get a glorious reward and a crown. And, and then he was even speaking about that at the beginning, verses about uh, something that we're working towards. You know, we enjoy our life here. We enjoy the fellowship. We love each other. But there is going to come a time that each one of us is going to depart. Amen. And when we depart, we want it to be said of us. I don't care what you say. I want to make sure be saying well done. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where I want to head. The reason I say that is because um, what my pastor, He's still my pastor, you know, uh, Pastor Morrison, Lawrence Morrison, Newburgh Tabernacle, is my pastor today. Yes. And the first lady, the mother of the church, uh, went on to be with the Lord yesterday. And so um, the thing that hurts us is because we're going to miss a smile, we're going to miss a joy, we're going to miss a food, too. Oh, yeah. She's a woman yeah. blood, she's a burn. But most importantly, we're going to miss her fellowship, her hospitality, and her love. And I know the family is grieving uh, today, but rejoicing, that's what I want to say. She's rejoicing because we all we can say is we know where she is. Amen. She's with Jesus. And we don't know when our days it was sudden, sudden for her, it shocked us because she was vibrant all the way up until the end. But God said, I'm plucking another cloud. Come on home, baby. Come on home. So she's with him. So our prayers go out to the Morrison family at this time and the Newburgh Tabernacle family. Y'all still my family. Yes. And uh, even though we're pastoring here, but uh, uh, new life is birthed out of new birth. Amen. <laughs> From new birth to new life. 
Yeah, so uh, love, love Pastor Morrison and the whole clan, but we miss Sister Morrison. But she, she lived this. She lived, yes. it. She lived the gospel. Amen. And of anyone we can say was a good example of her. And love the ministry. Each one of you out there has a ministry. God has a ministry within you. I don't know exactly what it is for. You know what God has called you to do. Now, Nisi's with the singing, with the plays, and the different ones, the hospitality. He's out here. We got a preacher out here. We got someone who's ready to work with youth and you guys. Uh, Y'all just hospitality. Y'all can dance down mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I love it. It's ministry. And, you, and you're, you're doing it from a point of leadership. And so what I'm saying is all of us in ministries and, and we, we have the capacity to have somebody to follow us. The men on yesterday were so beautiful how Vincent went off script. I told him to do do my neighbor. He said, I ain't doing that. I'm doing legs. Which was a God. You know, you know, you know right. it wasn't a you know, we were talking yeah. about legacy. And the legacy was about, am I leaving a legacy for somebody to follow a good example? And, and what is the legacy that I'm following? And that's what we're talking about with ministry. And God has called each one of us. And when you're in a pastoral calling, in an apostolic calling, evangelistic calling, Prophetic calling, whatever you're calling, just know it is a privilege to be called by God to serve His flock. Y'all privileged out there. Whatever capacity God has called you to minister, it is a privilege. You know, God could do this all by Himself, but He decided to work through you, to work through you, to work through me, to be a blessing, to pull somebody into the fold. And there's a man, Charles Spurgeon, he was a dynamic minister in Great Britain um, centuries ago. In fact, and this is what I love. So I got a chance to minister in one of the churches where he used to preach when I was in England. So mm. I just thought I was delighted. But he had this to say about ministry. He said, if God calls you to be a minister, don't stoop to become a king. Amen. You've been called to preach. Yes. Somebody tell you, are you president? You say, nah, I'm good. Because <laughs> I got a call. Right. It's a privilege, a delight to be able to share the word of God through the spoken word or the word of God through my life example with somebody so that God has trusted you and me to invite somebody to sit at the table with Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. It's a blessing. It gets no better than that. I remember when, when I finally, finally in college gave over completely to Jesus. I was preparing for law school. I was going to be a lawyer. But then when God hit me, bam, <laughs> hit me in the top of the head with the Holy Ghost, and it just went and just shook me up. And then I said, you know what? I'm not going to stoop to be a lawyer for man's law. I'm going to preach God's law. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to share and communicate yes. what God wants the people to know. Yes. And it's been a privilege to do that. And so whatever capacity God made you working in his kingdom, do know that he has confidence in each one of you that you can do a good job of it. You can sing for the sign over there in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, and what, we can sing all kinds of songs, but, but what better song than one that's going to exalt the Lord and save you of your soul? That the songs I sing are the ones that speak of Jesus yes. and what he's done for me. I was shackled by a headwind beneath the load of guilt and shame, but, yes. but, but he touched me. Hallelujah. So, as we minister, remember, this is what we got to do, my first point. Remember that it's God's sheep and not ours. Come on. That's so critical that we know that we don't get to a place that we feel people belong to us. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we can get to
to a place that we can try to control people, manipulate people. And God said, that's not what I called you for. I called you to be a shepherd and under-shepherd for Christ, leading people to the shepherd. The people belong to Jesus. When I look at people, when I talk to people, and, and sometimes, you know, I gotta admit, I y'all forgive the pastor, sometimes I may talk wrong to folks. And then when I get away, then God reminds me, he said, that is your kid. That is your child. That's my child. You talking about, you, you know, if somebody talked to, to third the wrong one, what are you going to do? You're going to say, that's my baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going you to get all up in their face, ain't you? <laughs> you say, now, he may have done something wrong. I, I can catch him. Like you talking to me about a person. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. He that, said, that's, that's my baby. baby. So do you just think of how sometimes we get in people's fuck face and we say something crazy to them? And you know who you're talking to? Jesus said, do you know who you're talking to? That's my baby. I beg your pardon. Yes, yes. So we've got to remember that as we minister to people, that there's somebody that cares even more about them than us. Even if it's a kid that we brought into the world. You know how you get people you say, child, I brought you into this world and I'll take you. Yes. How would I minister to your people? Scripture says, 1 Peter 5, 3, do not be like a ruler over people you're responsible for. <laughs> Have y'all ever seen that when people try to act like, you know, like, hey, you know what? You know, fall in line, fall behind me. Right. That, just, that just hurts me. And then we have a, a problem with some of our ministers. And, you know, but they, they are people too. But I'm saying, let this not be us. Uh, with, with your ministry, you can you can do something called, and I want y'all to repeat this after me, spiritual manipulation. Spiritual manipulation. What am I talking about with spiritual manipulation? Do you know what I mean? It's like when they feel like they've got the gift, they, they come up to you. God gave me a word for you. And all of a sudden, they hide behind God. God want you to do this. Do that. God told you that. Come on now. You know, God talked to me too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I see five hundred dollars here, sister. I know you didn't give enough in the offering. I saw that when you went into your pocketbook, God wanted you to pull seventy-five dollars more out. I'm waiting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying that. I'm saying, come on, man. Get off of that. Yeah. Now, I'm the pastor, I'm the leader, you know, but God, he, he leads gently. Jesus is a gentleman. Amen. Now, Jesus wants all of us saved, but he's going to be a gentleman. He's going to say, come unto me, all of you that have been come to me. I invite you. Take my yoke. It's easy. Learn of me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't own anybody. I don't even own myself. You know what I'm saying? I own my hell. I'm his steward. And whatever he does for me, I thank him for it. But as I minister to people, Jesus said, man, 
make sure you don't try to overwhelm and manipulate the people. Make sure that you do this. Humility is essential to effective ministry. We must come humble. We must be humble. It's not our ministry, it's God's. Amen. And when I say humility, I don't know if you know the depth of what I'm saying. It's not that I'm going around my head and, oh, no, no, humility means that God has given you power, but it's hearts under the direction of God in his spirit. God has given me a word for you, and sometimes it may be a word that hurts a little bit, but I try to make sure I do it gently, and I make sure that I'm saying what God said and not what I said. It's not about me, it's about him. But Jesus himself, being God in the flesh, thought it not robbery. I'm talking about Philippians, second chapter. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he humbled himself, submitted himself, became of no reputation, and said, I'm going to submit to the will of the Father. He could have came and looked at folk and did, you know, get out of my face or wielded his power, but no, he came, the scripture says he came meek and lowly. Even submitted to people that he made. The scripture says that the son came and made the people. He submitted and allowed them to kill him. So, because the father said that happened because you in your manhood have to die for that sin because I'm going to raise you back up and yes. then you're going to have all power, all authority. Yes. But he came humbly, meek and lowly. And he didn't, and this is the thing, I, I said this last week, it's so, it's so important. We sometimes like to point out people's sin. Sin patrol. I saw you did it. <laughs> you did it. You did it. You did it. And, and, and the sad thing, I've seen this with ministries where people will point out, and you're really trying to point at themselves because they're struggling with something. You know, we, we got our struggles. But Jesus, who had no struggles, when he came, what did he do? He came and he said, I see your need. Even before he healed a man who had paralysis, the first thing he said to him before he healed him was, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> Jesus came to forgive sin. Not to point him out, you know where your issue is. He came and told the woman at the well, I know you pass, but if you had just asked me for some water, asked me for a drink, I would have given you something to drink that would have satisfied your soul, that would have quenched your inhibitions, that would have allowed you to have freedom in the spirit. If you just come, I am the Messiah who came to liberate. Uh, yes, yes. Who needs liberty? I need liberty. I'm still working through some stuff. Whatever you, you, you get on your knees and God says, I'm just waiting for you to come to me in truth. And then I will set you free. Yes. And my job as a minister is just to come and say, I know a man from Galilee. If you're in sin, he'll set you free. And then you come trying to tell me what I did out here. Okay, I know that God, I know what you did. I'm saying be made free. Be made whole. Don't you know that God has come to relieve you of that situation? Yes, yes. Amen. Come on. Oh, that one's holy. That one's holy. I, 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 this is 
is not a cookie cutter church. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to make you into a gingerbread man and look like this or that. I'm just saying, come to Jesus. Yeah. Come to Jesus. Yeah. All of you who need to be set free. You know what your issue is? I don't think, but God knows it. And God has come to set you free. Yeah. Yeah. Some people love to get behind the pulpit and point out, yeah. Somebody on my left side and slept with Susie last night. I see. I see. Come on up. <laughs> my scripture says, love covers a multitude of sins. You know, I don't want nobody to point me out. You want you don't like the flashlight to be on you. You know, that's why you hide. That's why you do it. I'm saying, look, God can set you free. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
She said, because I found the dummy ministry. I said, well, you watch and see. You're going to take the test, and God's going to have you set the curve. She went in there and set the curve. Amen. And then when she went into school, it became from the lowest to the highest performing elementary. And they thought she was cheating. But she said, it ain't cheating. She said, I ain't cheating. I'm going with God. Because every time she would do, she would give God the glory. Yes. She said, this is not because of me. It's because of what God is doing yes. through me. Yes. And, and just as humble and, and, and move from there being a principal. Then they said, come on back and be over all 11 of our 11 elementary schools. She said, how can I do that? I said, you can't, but he can. Amen.
could have asked for anything. He said, you could have asked for Hoopty. <laughs> you, could, you could have asked for a mansion. He said, you didn't ask for wealth. You asked to know how to bless my people. He said, so I'm going to give you so much wisdom. It's going to bounce out of your head. He said, you're going to become the wisest man. And he said, then I'm also going to give you some blessings. I'm encouraging you to look at life in humility, to recognize, I don't care how many degrees you got, yeah. you could have a BA, a BS, which can be BS if you don't <laughs> Come on. MA, PhD, MOUSE, Nicky Mouse. <laughs> Amen. But when you approach life from a perspective of humility, which Jesus said, and putting others before you, this is what I say, it's my hallmark statement, is that when you put others first, then, then God will begin to put you first. Amen. That's right. You just expect God to bless you. So effective leadership is also built on superb fellowship. Mm. You know, you know if, if you ain't following nobody, nobody going to follow you. If you haven't learned, because see, a lot of times I, I see when I was a kid, I'll never forget when I was a little kid, and and, and some of the loudest mouths in our little youth groups that I used to be in every day. You know, yeah, I ain't gonna listen to so and so. Who they think they are? And they were always saying it because they felt jealous because they wanted to be a leader. And then when they became, and then somebody said, okay, I'll let you be the leader. Then they want everybody to listen to them. Hey, follow what I said, follow what I said. Anybody, am I the only one that have seen that? They, the, the most ineffective leaders are the ones that don't want to follow anybody because they want everybody to follow them. But when you've got somebody that sits in the back low key, just chilling, ain't looking for no glory or nothing, and, and, and then when people a lot of times reckon, you know, that's somebody that I can impart to you. And that's somebody that when they get before the people, people won't feel intimidated. And when they speak, they will see an example. And I don't mind following somebody like that. Amen. You might have somebody that ain't following quite right, but then they begin to feel convicted. You know, I better turn this thing around. Come on. That's why you've got to learn first how to follow. Scriptures, it all starts with following Christ. Paul said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Yes. I've already begun to tell you about the example that Christ followed. He said, I don't say anything of myself. It's always what my father has told me. I don't do anything until God has told me to do it. And for me and for you, we are following Christ most importantly. Yes. But not only do we follow Jesus, Sometimes he puts somebody in our life to be his representative, which is a privilege. He'll put a pastor, he'll put a youth leader, he'll put a this, he'll put a that. And, and sometimes we can get beside ourselves and say, well, they ain't telling me what to do. And, and who do they think they are? They may have about 5,000 years of education, but at least I got two. And I, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I forgot more than you know. <laughs> but sometimes we get, but when we can get that submissive spirit, and even at even at whatever pinnacle of leadership you are, you can learn from somebody. Exactly. I know when I thought that I was somebody and really was nobody, and I was teaching kids, a little eight-year-old taught me something. I brought the eight-year-old my youth group, he was just cutting up. And I brought him to the back in the office and I said, boy, you need to act more mature. You need to act grown, boy. And the boy looked up and he said, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the Lord, and I, then the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me. He said, he just eight years old. He got a point. <laughs> 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 Treat him like he ate. <laughs> Treat him like he ate. 
But see, sometimes we can learn. We learn from people, and we've got to be always open. Because God will use people yes. for a nugget of knowledge in us. But we definitely want to make sure that when God has put somebody in leadership over us, we may not always agree with it. But we just pray about it. We submit it. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Anybody ever been on a job and your boss and told you something stupid to do? You know it was stupid. But you just go ahead and go, all right. What you do is you pray about it. All right, all right. And then all of a sudden it comes scratching their head. Yeah. <laughs> Because they're learning just like you are. But what you do is you go home and you pray for them. That God will give them wisdom to know how. And give you the wisdom to know how to share. And be a blessing. Yes. That was something else for you, okay? I, I don't have to charge you. I'm going to call another offering. I'm giving out more than I plan. Uh, all right, who's going to be free? <laughs> but listen to this. Christ, like I said, taught humility is the key to effective ministry. We're back to that word. Humility is the key. The Son of Man did not come to be served. He came to serve and others and to give his life as a ransom for men. Now, I'm not asking any of y'all to go out there in the parking lot and go over like that little car run over and say, I will give my life a new word, new life, church. <laughs> I'm not asking you to do that. But you know what? Our lives God is looking for us to live a sacrificial life. Yeah. And, and he will show you what he means by that. When something is asked of you and you feel like rolling over in the bed. You know, recently I was, I was, I, I just, sometimes I have, is this anybody else? You hear your plans, you know, I'm going to be early finally for a change. And then all of a sudden something come up, maybe the baby go, Aah! <laughs> I was planning to go to bed one night. This was years ago. Um, it, it must have been about 10 o'clock at night. I'm living in apartments at Oral Roberts University because I'm going to school. And part time, I'm working in apartments in North Tulsa. So that's like a 12 hour job, right? You know, 12, five, four hours a day. I said, how do you do that? And I go to school and I do my thing. But it turned out that it wasn't a 12-hour job. That's all I got paid for. But it ended up being like almost a 24-hour job. So one night, then it, I went to bed. I got a call. And it was somebody who was on the north side who had been beat up terribly. Didn't have a car. And he called me. And it was an adult. It wasn't one of the kids in my program. But it was a parent to some of the kids in my program. And he said, can you come up here? I need somebody to take me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I didn't sign up for this. I don't know how many times I've said that. In my life. I didn't sign up. Anybody ever done that? I didn't sign up for that. You say, yeah, I wanted, a, I wanted a little Albert, but what about all those times that I didn't know this was going to come? <laughs> I heard you say it so fast. Now, I, I, know, I know, see, I'm a prophet. <laughs> God told me that. <laughs> sure. Life tells you that. How many times you want the kids, you want the grants, but then all of a sudden come the responsibility. Ah, I didn't sign up for this. Well, I signed up for this little part-time job while I'm in college that was paying me for 12 hours, and I'm thinking that's cool. But all of a sudden, life comes. And people all of a sudden are calling me at midnight. And I had to drive across town take him to the hospital, wait till he got out of the hospital, and then take him home, and I can get home to two. And I got class in there about eight. And the whole time I'm riding, when I'm with him, I'm smiling. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> when I get home, I say, I didn't sign up for this car. I didn't sign up. <laughs> but sometimes life is like that. We've got to be ready to sacrifice. I know I'm talking to somebody right now. Somebody's going through that this week. Yeah. You're saying, I didn't sign up for that. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't know it was going to take all of this. But Jesus said that if anybody wants to follow me, deny yourself. Mm -hmm. Take up your cross yes. and follow me. Yes. 
I have learned that when I sacrifice, when God is talking, because some people go overboard. I'm not saying that, that we become uh, uh, you being abused by people, but there are times that we are called to sacrifice, friends. And when we know that God is in it and we sacrifice our time, we sacrifice our mind, when we sacrifice and God is calling us to do it, I have learned that somehow, I call this, this is another thing for free, sister. I did not have this in my notes. I'm going to finish up, I promise you, in the next I have now, and I'm going to finish in about two, five minutes. <laughs> but listen to this. When we learn to sacrifice, and sometimes we even get in that court and say, I only got two quarters, I need both of them. <laughs> you only got a little bit. But God has called you, and you know it. I'm not saying to do it when God has called you. But God has put it on your heart that I've got to help in this situation. And when you do it, God has a tendency that after you gave it, you get three and four times back. And this is the principle I'm going to tell you. God's economics, there is what I call elasticity property to it. He's elastic, elasticity. He knows how to stretch and stretch. When you thought you gave all your time, God gives you more. When you go to bed, sleeping time, you shall only got up in four and you got all the rest you need. He has a way of stretching income, stretching dollars, stretching resources and you say, oh, how did I do all of that? And then somebody will come up to you and give you a blessing and say, Yes. And, and like I'm saying, those that are on the line that, that are just watching me, I'm your evangelist, but do pray that God will send you to the church. And if you're in the church, respect your leadership, yeah. whether it be the pastor or whomever in your cell group or whatever. Respect and, and pray that God will put a godly example before you because he wants you to learn how to submit and to follow examples that are godly and biblical. And lastly, I want to close. Let's give a godly example for others to follow. Amen. Let's make sure that that, that this is why you, you were on time with that message on legacy yesterday. Mm. Remember I told you I was going to steal some of those messages? Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's know. Let's not, I'm not walking just for myself. 
myself. There are people watching me. You, you gave your, your testimony this morning to Covetta was, was, was all that, the bag of chips. Because she was just trying to bless this girl, but that became a legacy moment that she said, I still remember when I was young and you were no longer in my life. You called me into the principal's office. You were in another school, but you called just because you wanted to remember my birthday. But I want each one of us to be conscious that everything we do, everything that we say is being recorded in somebody's mind. And let's make sure that, that when I wake up and I walk out the door, that the way I'm living is a way that will please and satisfy Jesus and will point people to him and not simply to me. Mm. Let's be a blessing to somebody today. God bless each one of you that has joined me today as well. And do make sure that you have an excellent. Thank you.